Hey, what's up, guys? It's Josh with Paparazzi Imaging and Films. This is the Vignette Podcast. We have special guest Justin Blazovic. Uh, this is episode six. So let's jump right into it. 2021, you had your first win in Sport Light. Sport Light, yeah. Sport Light class. Uh, so what was what was that moment like? Uh, probably that had to have been one of the best moments probably in my life racing career so far. Um, that really, uh, it pretty much got me, you know, it got me a better deal with Articat. It got me a better deal with teams. Um, that year was probably one of the, it was the beginning to a really rough last two or three years, whatever it's been of, of racing. Um, cause that year was, I think that was the year of COVID pretty sure 21 mm -hmm. like the first race back we had no fans something like that yeah um yeah erx we had to have, i think all the team the team members had to be, had to have like one guy or yeah, something like, something that, like some that crap and that was the that was the year the first erx had the 90 mile an hour starting line where we started way back if you remember that <laughs> yeah into that first yeah, corner that one was gnarly so i went that year well starting from the beginning i uh it was at that race, my sled broke on Friday, and then Saturday, I got the whole shot in the Sportlight final, was going around, made it two jumps, got my back end clipped, and then flipped it going down that stretch, broke my wrist, broke my collarbone, had some back problems. Um, that one was kind of, that was tough, but it wasn't really bad. I mean, it was just a couple of bones here and there. So I think it was six weeks, I came back to that second, the second ERX that we had there, and yeah, I mean, the cards kind of just fell into place. I actually, I got the whole shot in that race, crashed off the start. Uh, they red flagged it. They didn't red flag it for me. They red flagged it for guys that got tangled up behind me. So thankfully I was able to get back onto the front row for that one. I kind of got, I kind of got a gift there, but <laughs> I, I think after that restart, I started like eighth or something. And then just, I just ran a amazing race got up to like second or third within like the first lap and uh yeah it was with battling with colton krajak i mean we were that was like the first year i was working with them and we had a great race and it came down like the second to last lap and i passed them and uh yeah that was that was a special moment that was uh yeah there's a lot of a lot of people there supporting me that day it was it was awesome not only to win at my uh my home track yeah. but to win at the we came back to the same track that took me out the opening weekend and i came back and i got a win and that was uh that was one of the most special, probably the special, most special moment of my racing career so far, I'd have to say. That's crazy to, to come back and just kind of just say, you're not going to take me out like this. I'm going to come back yeah. and, you know, way better than I was before. That's awesome. That's a, that's a really good story to hear because it's, it w how, how long were you laid up for? Because that, that's been what, a month and a half maybe? I I think it was it was six or seven weeks and I had two days on the snowmobile going into that event we had oh. we had I think one day up at Brainerd for a regional and then I had one day at ERX for a practice so I think that's all the time I had on the sled going into that weekend and I mean I think total I only did four races that whole year because right after that we went to Eagle River and I uh I blew up my knee that was the beginning of that whole dilemma I blew tore my ACL meniscus in practice and then did my two heats and it just got progressively worse and worse until I just I couldn't even line up for the final it was bad and I did I that's that time I didn't know what was wrong but that was yeah so that was a great season for me I mean two three races four races something like that and I got a win so I mean on the record it shows I mean my win percentage was amazing that year <laughs> yeah that's always good to have um and then going into the following season, uh, you had a, what, a, a blown, no, you, you, you told me earlier before the show started that the front end at ERX, it seems like you and ERX don't have good luck together. No, it's, yeah, it's kind of a love-hate, I guess, going there. I mean, I got the win, but I've had a lot of broken stuff there. Uh, yeah, that was last season. Um, there was the two, two events. The first ERX, I was, uh, back row i can't remember what something happened in the heat races where i was back row um which happened a lot last year but uh i was like i was like fourth or third or something coming around the first corner from the back row and um 
came around and this was when the track was going forwards in the normal way and mm -hmm. I hit the triple in the middle of the track I think I was one of the only guys in sport light to hit it I would no one that was that it. rhythm section yeah right by the pond okay. yeah so I hit that um belt broke on the double after sled tagged me um I thought thought I blew my knee out for the third time there I had to get carted off the track had to spend a ton of time and therapy i woke up at like six in the morning the next day spent a few hours down uh getting my knee worked on doing acupuncture a bunch of like electrode stuff on it it was that was crazy um, you must have good insurance <laughs> we we max out our insurance about the second <laughs> day of the year <laughs> but no i was uh thankful for that i had my trainer kelsey at lift pt she did a ton for me over the last few years but she was able to get me back i raced i got like six or something on saturday and which isn't great, but I was just happy to even be able to own the track. And then the next ERX when we were going backwards is the one where, yeah, it was, I, I think I got the whole shot and me and Brandon were mm -hmm. battling. He got in front of me going over like the finish line or something. And I was right behind him. And that was when there was the split line, split lane up at the top on 169. Yeah. So I was on the inside, he was on the outside. And when you're in that top position, there's no, I'm going to double this triple. You ha you have to go for you have to hit every jump at yeah. that point. Cause, Especially with Brandon's speed, yeah. he's fast. I mean, yeah, running with those guys, you can't. There's really not room for mistakes, and you know the guy behind you is going to hit it. Mm -hmm. So, I had I had to try to hit on the inside. I wasn't sure about it, but I I went for it. Seat bounced it, came up short, and uh, yeah, pretty much just fell out of the sky. And on impact, the whole right side of the suspension just blew out of the sled. So I just pile drived right into the ground, and that. That one kind of hurt a little bit, and uh, that more just hurt the ego. I mean, that was a race I felt I should have won. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I felt great. It just finally had that boost of confidence that I was starting out front. I had good heat races, and, uh, yeah, that one that one definitely stung. But, yeah, it's been a love-hate at Erex so far. It seems like a lot of the – I don't want to hate on Articat by any means because they're, you know, they're, they're – They've got a lot of championships with Tucker Hibbert and a lot of other big names, but it seems like their their sleds don't really hold up to the big air, I would say, you know, or the, like those commitments yeah. to, all right, I got to make this this jump like you're saying because there's a fast guy behind me, and if I don't do it, you know, I'm going to get passed. So I don't know. It seems like it's either either front end suspension or or blown belt. Yeah, I don't know. It's I mean, every brand's got their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, I broke more stuff this year than I've ever broken in my life, but it was all it was a new thing besides blowing belts. I was breaking something new almost every time and it was it was just weird things. Like bolts would snap that, you know, we checked a hundred times and they were always tight and it was just so I don't know. I've, I mean, every brand obviously has their strengths and weaknesses, but I think it was just more or less just bad luck mm. honestly if anything like like I've raced years without breaking any of those parts that I broke this year and just you know it's just I think it was just extremely bad luck is what I have to chalk it up to and it probably was the really cold weather that weakness that weakened yeah. the, the material at Fargo yeah you know I don't know you you can probably say that there's a lot of things that really didn't help keep those things together yeah but you know it's like you said it's part of it every manufacturer has their has their weaknesses it's just trying to strengthen those weakness weaknesses and and going after those wins yeah um <clears throat> so moving on you you mentioned that you've had uh knee injury after knee injury um seeing you in the gym we kind of work out at the same gym yep. and seeing you walk around in a knee brace like that's just like you said earlier it's got to be really really annoying and really not a boost to your to your confidence when it's like injury after injury so do you still have is your knee still nagging nagging you now after the season or after your 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 uh your injuries are um yeah yes and no it uh I'm I'm gonna have issues with it for the rest of my life, and it's just kind of something that you know I've got to live with now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it it does affect me. The things po constantly popping and cracking, and it's more now I'm confident in the surgery that I had the second time around that it's gonna be good, and it feels it feels great when I ride. Mm -hmm. 
and it feels great after I ride and there's just there's just certain things it just doesn't like to bend sometimes I have some issues in the cold but uh um, oh that sucks because you're racing in the, yeah, in the cold <laughs> but it's just it's more it's more or less just a mental kind of thing that you know it's already happened twice you just kind of got to learn how to put all that beside and that's something that I really struggled with my my first knee injury the mm-hmm. first time around it was uh the season after that was the first time in my life that I've ever been scared to scared to fully commit to something scared to scared to ride a snowmobile pretty much yeah and it was I mean and it was uh going into that year I knew something wasn't right with my knee like I knew something didn't even go, after surgery after the surgery no. something didn't go right with the surgery it felt I can't remember if it was a practice right after one of the first races or if it was like the first or second race but I knew I knew something wasn't right because that first one I was that first season after my knee injury I was going I'd leave the track not being able to walk I was limping around and it was knew be super swelled up and I was spending I was spending all week that was the condensed year we were racing like January to March Mm -hmm. I'd spend all week just icing it and doing therapy just to be able to line up the next weekend wow it was just that was the biggest mental mental battle for me that whole year it 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 showed in the results I was just I was not in it from the from the get-go I was I was super scared to ride the sled and everything and then finally after the the second surgery I'm just like I finally got my head in the right spot I was like screw it I mean you, you, in this sport, it's all or nothing. You can't be, you can't be half committed to something like this and do good. I mean, you got to be all in. And mm-hmm. I was finally had some confidence in my knee again. And I mean, last year was tough, but we showed that I had three podiums, which not proud of, but it was a step in the right direction. And uh, you know, we ran fast laps, but I mean, the knee was knee was healthy, and we showed that we had speed all year long, which is one of the biggest things that. I take away from the season is that I showed that I had the speed to run up in the front and I had it. I I still had it. Like I didn't, I didn't lose what I had two years ago when I had finally won my first race. Like I was still the same. I was still the same kid that knows how to ride a snowmobile. I just was finally getting my confidence back and, you know, just mechanicals and unfortunate events was the only thing that was holding me back that year. But yeah, it's, it's just been a, the biggest things has been mentally for my for my knees Mm -hmm. yeah it's a huge any kind of any kind of sport is definitely mental um especially when you have injury after injury you don't really your confidence just keeps going down and down and down and then if like not having the right surgery too did you see the same doctor after your second surgery or was it a totally different doctor yeah we went back to the we went back to the same doctor and we told them we're like look the the surgery you did for me like obviously didn't work and we did because the first time around we did a hamstring graft because mm. they didn't think i was done growing so they took a hamstring which can stretch mm-hmm. and they took that as my aco well with the amount of impact you get from racing it was constantly stretching mm-hmm. and it just stretched and didn't stretch back so it's just it just stretched and stayed oh, pretty so much unstrung. Limbo. So it was, it was wow. just all over the place, and yeah. So we went back, and then we did a tendon graft the second time, and that one it sucked. The sur- like the surgery itself, I feel like was worse than the hamstring <laughs> one, but recovery was recovery was stressful, but it felt I was I had way more confidence in myself and in the surgery and when the season started rolling around is it felt a million times better and Mm -hmm. I didn't have any issues with it at the throughout the year it was just gaining strength all year I mean I'm still gaining strength in my knee it's not it's not where I want it to be but it's I'm way better than what I was two years ago right right it's it's crazy that you mentioned that um that you that you know your body that well to where the first surgery wasn't what it what it could have been and then the second surgery is you're like a hundred times better than you were and that changes your mental focus to to ride better to have better results and and just be in a better mental state so then you can perform for the sponsors that you're representing out on the track Mm -hmm. you know and 
aside from having sled problems, it's like, you know, you're healthy. You just got to get the sled to be where you're yeah, at. It's just one less thing you got to worry about on a race weekend. You don't, I don't have to constantly worry about my, you know, am I going to be able to walk, leave on the track? Right. You know, it's, I just, I'd go see my trainer the week prior. She taped me up. It was, you know, uh, that's more for a peace of mind. Now, if anything too, I was just constantly getting my knee taped and, you know, just things like that. But you no, know, it was, uh, yeah, it was a good, it was just one less thing I had to worry about going into every single weekend. Yeah. It, it was an ACL, you said? It wasn't meniscus? A- ACL yeah. and meniscus, both Oof. both times. So both times. Yeah. So wow. there's, yeah, my, my meniscus bothers me more than my ACL does now, just because how mangled it's been. It's been flipped and ripped in half. And yeah. This, it's been through the ringer. Yeah. Quite a few <laughs> times now. <laughs> well, I... I hope this coming season you're you're on top of the box more than you were this past season. Yeah, you know, because I know you got the you got the drive, you got the will, you got the speed, you got you got everything. You know, the support system. Mm-hmm. It's it's all it's always good to to see you out on the track, really doing what you know how to do mm-hmm. out there. You know, when when you did get on the podium, it was like that kid deserves that. Yeah, you know, especially after in, after the injuries. Yeah, no, it's yeah getting. I mean, only getting three podiums, but those three podiums were really special podiums. I mean, it just it shows how hard we've worked collectively, just as a family, as a team, all my family and friends, and mm-hmm. everyone that just kind of pops in on the trailer to help and support us. It makes it makes those so much more special because you're finally able to show you like that you're still able to do this. And when everything falls into the right place, and you know the sled makes it through a whole race, and you make it through a whole race, that you know you can run up here and you you're showing everyone that you've got what it takes right for sure for sure it's you guys are definitely animals out there i don't know how you do it yeah me filming in in fargo in the negative 30 but you guys riding in that i don't know how on our on a super icy track yeah too it's insane um but yeah let's let's kind of move on from there too uh what would you what would you consider um harder Moto or, or super or snow cross? Um, I guess I think, I think there's kind of here and there, like there's certain aspects where snow cross is harder. I think there's certain aspects where moto and super cross are harder. I mean, like I, I like racing snowmobiles cause I, I get hot super easily. Like I, there's no way I could do 30 minute motos out in the, out in the heat. There's just, no way for me to do that. Those guys, mm. are, those guys are nuts. But I've also, <laughs> I've heard some guys that have done moto and they go hop on a snow cross sled and they're like, this is ridiculous. I don't know how you're able to do this kind of stuff because you're constantly just pounding and smashing and, you know, the tracks get gnarly. But I think, I guess, I don't know. It's, they kind of, they're like, they're both motorsports, but they're so, they're different, but they're not. I guess it's, it's kind of hard to say they each got their own respective like difficulties i'd have to say mm-hmm. i mean i guess it's just trying to think about it i don't just i mean because snow cross is way the races are way shorter yeah but you're you're pushing really hard for the short amount of time yeah i guess if i had to say i think motocross is probably one of the gnarliest things you could do if i just with the heat and yeah third two 30 minute motos those guys are nuts yeah and, you know, I would have said, uh, you know, snow cross, you see tons of people get hurt, like, constantly. And I would have say that's more dangerous, but, I mean, you see Chase Sexton just got his championship. I mean, there was, what, two factory guys left out of the whole <laughs> whole season. I mean, those guys are dropping, like, flies for the Supercross. So, I mean, that's there's there's a lot of injuries in that, too. So I Yeah. Mean, would you say he got handed that championship? I mean... Yeah, but you got to be in it all 17 rounds. I mean, I'm not going to say... Consistency, really. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think I think it was his from the beginning. Like, Tomac, Tomac's fast, but Chase Sexton constantly had the speed over him. Yeah, Just even he though was, he kept he kept throwing the front, yeah. the front end away. I mean, if, if he didn't... Everyone says Tomac handed it to him, but Chase, I think, handed Tomac, like, three or four wins throughout the season from tucking the front end and just, you know... If he didn't do that, it would have been way closer. If not, Chase would have had the lead going through all the way up to the 17th round. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. It, it's all it's all consistency, just like any sport. Yeah. Uh, Tugger Hibbert was consistent. Um, that's why he was 
a champion so for mm-hmm. so long. Same with Elias. Um, but I, I do agree that Moto is pretty gnarly. I th- and between Super, Moto, and Snow, I would say they're both... They're both on a spe- they're all on a spectrum, yeah. but they're all different parts of the spectrum mm-hmm. of like, all right, this is gnarly, this is gnarly, but this is way more gnarly, you know, but it's it's all gnarly at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you can if you can pound a six, seven hundred pound sled on a, on on a snow cross track and then you know, I think that just makes you way more of an animal, but doing the heat, yeah, like like you said, a thirty minute it's pretty freaking gnarly too. Yeah. Let's say we go to Millville, that place is in a hole. Yeah. You know, there's so much moisture coming out from the dirt. It's just like, it's so gnarly. Yeah. No, and some of those moto guys, I mean, they like, they can't race in the cold. I mean, there's something about it that they, they just can't handle it. But then like for me, <laughs> I can't, I can't handle the heat. I mean, once it gets 75 outside, I think that's starting to get hot, but I agree. I'm the same yeah, way. So I, I like it. Like I like going out riding dirt bikes when it's like sixty five. I think it's perfect. Yeah, like almost like that spring fall yeah, weather. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we could we can kind of mention another uh, a name here, Alex Martin. He's with Skokwitz Racing, mm-hmm. and he said that he he jumped on a sled or he jumped on a sled at Millville at his home track, and then he went to Canterbury. I was talking to Levi Injured, the team manager over there at Skokwitz. And he said that Alex mentioned that Snowcross was so gnarly I've compared heard, to. Yeah. I heard that from, uh, I can't remember who I heard it from, but years ago back when Christian Craig retired for the first time, mm-hmm. I had heard that he was on a sled up at Shearings. And, uh, he I would did, like to see a video of that. Yeah. He, uh, from what I was told, he went out there and did one ride and said, you guys are nuts. I don't know how you can do this. And he, I think he rode for like two days or something, but he was like, I, this is above me. Like you guys are gnarly. Wow. That's, and I don't know if that's a hundred percent true or not. I've just, I've just heard that over the years, but I mean, yeah, it'd be cool to see a lot more pro guys or like either retired supercross guys, motocross guys, or just, you know, it'd be cool to see some of those guys hop on a sled and try something different. See, just see what they think. Yeah. Be, I think it'd be pretty cool. There's, I know me living from, or me from, me, me being from the East Coast, I know a couple guys that used to race professional motocross, professional quad racing too, that came over to uh, the snowcross side and they were, you know, they kind of transitioned a little bit easier, um, but they also were like, this is freaking crazy, but they, they kept into it, you know, Mm -hmm. they kept into it. I, you probably know the team, uh, team Southside Polaris. Yep. Yeah, they recruited a couple of hmm. guys from from the moto side to come over and race snow. Yeah, it's just I think it's just a whole different kind of gnarly. I mean, mm-hmm. to be able to handle the cold and it's just it kind of is just up to what you're able to handle. Right. I mean, I'm sure if I raced moto my whole life and I didn't race snowmobiles, I mean, I probably would hate the cold. But like, <laughs> I grew up I grew up on snowmobiles, not on dirt bikes, and I right. grew up to just love the cold and be used to the cold and not the heat. So, you know, they're they're both absolutely gnarly you can't take anything away from anyone who does them for sure yeah i i get asked all the time why do i live in minnesota why do i love the cold so much from you know from Mm -hmm. my family and and i'm just like i i kind of acclimated myself to like the cold so then i can work in the cold yeah you know it's it's like you're saying if you grew up there in that weather then you're 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 kind of forced to like it yeah but if you did moto it'd be the same I've, I've loved moto and I've kind of dealt with the heat. Um, I raced myself for, for a little while, but I just had to get used to it. Yeah. And then when I started doing snow cross, it's like, okay, I like this. I like the winter a lot more. Mm-hmm. And you, you grew up in Minnesota too. So you're yeah. kind of, you kind of grew up in the cold more yeah. too, where a lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. You know, probably if you ask Ryan Dodge, I'm sure he doesn't like the winners here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, all right. So outside of being an athlete, you uh, you own your own manufacturing parts company uh, for snow snowcross sleds. Mm-hmm. Kind of talk me through the process of why you started it, how you started it, and where the future you want to like. What's the future look for for what is it? JB products. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that, um, it kind of kind of started in like 2019, 2020. That's when I started making stuff for myself, I guess. Um, I mean, we had seen, I think it was, I don't know, Tucker Hibbert was out riding with some goofy windshield on his sled, and no one really knew what, what, what it was for. It was like eagle, eagle wings, yeah, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and someone started saying that was for like blocking roost, and then a few other guys started putting them on their sleds. I'm like, huh, well, I want one of those, but it was kind of teams were just making them for themselves. So uh, I had an old snow flap that was all chewed up. I I just kind of made a made a little template, put it on the, you know, made this little piece for the sled, and I went and did a few races with it, and people started coming up to me asking me, you know, where'd you get that? I'm like, oh, well, I made it. They're like, well, can you make one for me? I'm like, sure, just give me some plastic, I guess, and I can, I can make you one. And then I did that for just a couple of years, and then finally I'm like, a couple of guys started coming to me. They're like, well, we get ours made, but they break. We don't like them. Hmm. Can you make one that's stronger? I'm like, sure. So, you know, I just started making more and more parts. And I started making them for Skidoo's and Polaris's. And then 2021, I finally, I'm like, well, I kind of want to do this, you know. I kind of want to take a little bit bigger skill instead of just making parts for me and my buddies. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll try selling them to everybody. So I made a whole bunch of, spent all summer making templates by hand with a, with a piece of wood and a jigsaw, <laughs> ordered up a whole bunch of plastic, figured out, you know, where you could buy plastic from in Minnesota, because no one I knew has ever done anything like this. Mm-hmm. Just started, yeah, just started making some parts, selling them on Facebook and just by word of mouth. And then more, more people started coming to me. They're like, your parts are nice. I mean, they're not breaking, they're decent quality and... Then I started getting a couple of teams that would send me messages. I think Andersons and Woodies were like some of the first guys to text me and, you know, get some parts. And that was that was pretty cool. I mean, I can sit there on the side of the track and be like, hey, I mean, these suds are pro. And they got a part that I made in my garage with my hands, you know, <laughs> out on their out on their sled. So, you know, that was super cool. And then starting in 2022, I started working with a water jet company mm-hmm. in Ham Lake. And what is that? Uh, just like a big water jet table. Oh, they, okay, okay. They cut everything out on, mm-hmm. instead of making everything by hand. So all the parts were, they were perfect. Yeah. From, I know, I had to, uh, with Dave Otto, he taught me some CAD design stuff. So I learned how to, I bought a c- computer and uh, bought CAD software, and I started learning how to do some of that. What a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I never would have thought I would have been doing something like Don't that. Don't tell Al- Alex Fort- Fortune that. Yeah. Uh, he'll, start, he'll start calling you names when he sees you on the line. He already calls me names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, so continue. But yeah, so I learned how to do CAD drawings, and I started taking my parts that I'd make. I'd make, like, one test part, you know, get them printed out. Then I'd load it up into CAD, mm-hmm. you know, make sure that's right, and then I'd send it out to the water jet company. You know, then I'd get a big stack of parts back, and all I'd have to do is assemble them, put them together, and then... Yeah, and I've still been selling them just on like Facebook, and I had started an Instagram and things like that. But no, hopefully, I got some things planned for it within the next year, two years. I'm hoping. I don't know if I'm able to get everything I wanted to do done this year. It's just been busy with graduating high school and work and everything right now. But I mean, I've got some things in the works. Hopefully, we'll have a website this summer or next summer, so I'm able to, you know, start selling stuff like that and. Selling stuff direct. Off selling stuff stuff. directly, yeah. It's just make it way easier. And, um, yeah, I've got a few more parts that hopefully I think I'll release around Heyday's time mm-hmm. that, I've been, that I've been working on. I mean, I think I took, like, two days off after Iowa, and I just started building parts again because it's nice. It's nice to kind of get that stuff done right away. Mm-hmm. Start So you got time to make your stuff all summer, get some photos done with it. And, you know, it's something cool. It's something that I hope. It's kind of my way of once I'm done racing snowcross, I can still be involved in the community. Right. And it's it's just the coolest thing in the world to me to be able to see, like, you know, watching just pro races and be like, that guy's got my part, that guy's got my part. You know, all these parts were in my garage. I made those. I mean, it's, you know, if, even if people don't really know who I am, it's just for me personally, I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. Like, I mean, little me would have no idea, like, I didn't even know that I would end up racing nationals and now I've got parts. I'm racing nationals and I've got parts on pro snowmobiles. It's just, it's beyond me. I think it's awesome. That is pretty cool. 
uh, they they do say big things have small beginnings mm-hmm. you know that's that's really cool to to have a product that's on a national tour or a national circuit as big as snowcross and are you sponsoring any guys right now or are you just kind of keeping it low key for cuz obviously you sponsor yeah. yourself and have your own products but is there are you kind of expanding a little bit more or are you going to keep it low uh it's been pretty low key i mean i've given I just give some deals to like my close buddies and stuff, you know, you know, I'll sell you parts at cost, what it cost me to make them and stuff. But, mm-hmm. um, hopefully once I'm able to like get a website and get an LLC and you know, everything along those lines, my goal is to eventually have at least one team in every manufacturer mm-hmm. running my parts that, that are sponsored. And I've been talking to a couple guys over the summer and I think we'll have, I think we're going to have at least one team sponsored by him next year, but it's all, hopefully we have more of that stuff kind of finalized going into the fall, going into heydays, that kind of area. But mm-hmm. that's definitely, definitely a goal for me is to have actual riders being sponsored by, by me. That's, that's kind of one of the next steps in the company for, mm-hmm. for me is getting riders. Are you worried about ruffling any feathers in the industry as if like, Let's say CNA, they, they have their cornering kits. Mm-hmm. You make those too. Are you worried if, like, they're going to be like, hey, you can't make these anymore? Um, no, not really. I kind of try to – I try to stay in my own lane. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not. Like, I'd stay out of Rox's way. I'm not going to make any handguards. I'm trying to, like, stay out of CNA's way. I mean, see, I had my ski wings out before, like, they did. Yeah. So they I had was the a, short ones. They had they had short ones, and I had made a different style of one. And you know, I don't know. They, I feel like they kind of run. They'll run that more. They got a lot of bigger field. They mm-hmm. they got more riders and everything like that. And you no, know, it is what it is. If if I can't sell something like that, I mean, I'll stick to. I'll make other things. You know, right. there's. What's nice is I kind of started in my own field I mean no one was really making windshields like me and I'm kind of still one of the really only guys that are making them mm-hmm. so I'm I've kind of got my own lane and I can branch off to go what direction I want to go right but I'm not really trying to especially since I'm still racing I'm yeah. not trying to ruffle any feathers with anyone so I'm trying to I'm just trying to stay in my own lane like for now yeah yeah for sure that's cool that's cool Got to, you got to respect everybody and, yeah. and not step in, step on any toes, but also know that the, really you have no rooftop to, you know, to, to stop mm-hmm. production or stop innovating. That's really cool. So each design is made by you. Yeah. Everything, everything's pretty much a hundred percent built in this garage. That's or, crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'll just, I'll try to find a snowmobile. No, I got a couple of buddies around here which is nice because there's a lot of people that race snowmobiles around this area. So mm-hmm. I can get a player so I can get a skidoo and I can bring them into the garage and I can just spend a couple of days designing parts, just out of cardboard and Sharpies and stuff like that. And once I get something I like, I can upload in a CAD, make some solid designs and, you know, get those printed off to make test parts. And then once I got something I really like, you know, I got a good CAD design and go from there. But yeah, everything's 100% I've done so far pretty much by myself I mean, i've gotten help from guys like dave Otto with cad and stuff but everything's pretty much been like my own design and my idea so you're a self-taught engineer pretty much pretty much yeah it's <laughs> without going to school pretty much yeah it's <laughs> just been it's been a learning experience it's it's fun for me just to be able to mess with like cad designs and you know i've always been kind of making stuff stuff like that i mean even just going back to like when i was a kid making bmx jumps and stuff i mm-hmm. mean just things like that. It's always been, I like building stuff. I've always been working with my hands and stuff. So it really doesn't even feel like a job to me and just doing it for fun. Yeah. But you know, I'm getting paid. Yeah. Making sweet. a little side yeah. of money. That's cool. That's really cool. And there, I don't really see a lot of people coming out with like parts like that for snow, snowmobiles. I see a lot more in the moto scene, yeah. you know, I think, would you say that it's harder to make specialty one-off parts for snowmobiles because they're really there's really not any room to to make any other parts yeah you know? that's that's definitely something i mean the when you look at it on a spectrum i mean snowmobiling is so small mm-hmm. expe- and even narrow snowmobile racing i mean it's it's so tiny compared to motocross i mean you got mxgp you got 
pro nats, you got supercross, I mean, you got guys racing in all 50 states. You got guys racing in all sorts of other countries overseas. And snowmobiling is so, so tiny compared to motocross. I mean, there's only, there's a limit, even with like the rules and stuff we got in classes. I mean, the sled's got to stay stock. So mm -hmm. there's, you can't even like, I couldn't make a, like a lightweight hood or something right. like that. Cause you can't run something like that. It'd be cool and you could probably do it, but no one would buy it because you can't run it. So yeah. it's, there's only it's, the mountain guys really. Cause they're, yeah. So that's, that's hopefully something I can do too, is expand into like the mountain market and trail riding. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just with racing that I'm doing, I got school still. It's, I'm happy where I'm at with snow cross and that's just what I like doing. But the goal is to get into all kinds of racing and getting the, getting the different fields and stuff like that. But right. Yeah. And you, you mentioned this, the sleds being stock. I kind of ask everybody, um, you still got time, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I kind of ask everybody that's in the snowmobile industry is, is snowmobile getting or snowmobile racing kind of, I don't want to say dwindling away, but getting smaller than it already is because of the population that was during mods i mean i personally think the no mods like i don't think we'll see mods ever again yeah the mods were the mods were sweet and i mean if the mods if you're not watching snowcross because there aren't mods you weren't really a true snowcross fan they're still the same racers you i hear mean, that guys yeah I mean, you can, you see with Formula One, those guys are, they obviously have a huge budget, but even those guys are now on a budget cap. Yeah. I mean, whatever millions or billions their budget cap is, but those guys are on a budget cap. I mean, you gotta, you gotta try to do something to make the sport affordable because you can't, I mean, if, if one team is spending 50 grand on their sleds and then you got another team that only can put 15 grand into their sled, I mean, it's way more the sled over the rider. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a privateer compared to a factory rider yeah. and uh i mean even just over the years with like the tracks and stuff the tracks have gotten way gnarlier in the last five six years compared to what everyone used to run i mean you think so i think so what about the year the, the last year of mods when they went to michigan at the so at the soaring eagle casino and there were just huge triples i mean Big jumps are big jumps. In all honesty, for most guys that are able to ride, big jumps aren't that hard. Yeah, it's can, just commitment. Yeah, it's pretty much weird. We're seeing a lot more like technical rhythm sections and things like that. And okay. I think like back when you'd see 130 sport riders or something like that, I mean, the tracks were, you know, double, 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 you know, finish line. It was, the tracks were tough, but mm -hmm. they were, I think they were just a lot more, they were simpler. I mm -hmm. feel like, in my opinion, you have these big air jumps and stuff, but it'd be double, big air, triple, you know, mm -hmm. another double or something like that. Instead of where you got, you guys got, now we got like a double, double of a triple that'll form because of how rutted the thing's getting out. Yeah. And you got, I mean, I think the tracks just get gnarlier and that kind of dwindles it out. But okay. like, that's, that's my opinion on kind of something like that. Okay. Let's I can I can agree with that. I, I after having Levi on the show and having Robbie Malinowski on the show, it was, their perspective was kind of kind of changed my perspective of sleds are faster now because the yeah. production is forcing the sleds to be faster mm -hmm. because you you can't really do any mods. So then you know Skidoo is dominating yeah. heavily, and you got to make the sleds more nimble also less likely to break um and when you do any sort of mod to a sled it's you know you create a weak point in one area or another and i i, I will agree that the tracks are getting a lot more technical you know to to almost like a super crossy mm -hmm. you know not with the big air like there's some still some big air but it's it's slowing the riders down to where they got to be you know yeah. they got to time everything yeah, no, I feel like I feel like the sleds are so good to where we're at. Like you don't need, you don't like back then. 
they were doing a bunch of different engineering and stuff, lightening things up. But these sleds are already getting decently light. They got a ton of power. The skids are great in them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a ton that you really need to modify. I mean, I think it'd be kind of cool to run the pro class. You could, you know, maybe give them a limited, they can do some motor work or they got one area where they can, they can mod out. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can mod the skid. I agree. Maybe they can mod, maybe they can mod one thing or maybe they can run twin pipes mm -hmm. or something you know do some mo motor work and then run twin pipes but leave it mostly stock so then you can kind of get that ring to it and mm -hmm. it kind of brings something like that back and just you know maybe make them a little bit more so there's something between pro light and pro yeah but nothing like a full-blown mod sled yeah where they did complete r&d on the chassis did engine work everything yeah i yeah yeah, it, yeah. just do just do one area of the sled where you're able to where you're able to do something with maybe, maybe change it every year. I don't know. I'm just saying things, but like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe have one spot on the sled where they are, they're allowed to go full bore or 50% bore, you know, kind of yeah. just so there can be some creativity in the sleds too. Yeah. I think that would probably bring, and I've mentioned this in the, in the podcast is having one thing that can give excitement to the sport again, Yeah, you know, cause we haven't really had that, I believe. We went to Canterbury and it was crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where was the, the excitement there? The only real excitement was either it's a crash and hopefully the guy gets up or, you know, there's big air in the track or, you know, some Colt could two throws a fat whip over yeah. the finish line. You know, <laughs> one I, of the two. I think the Three. triple crown helped with that too going into the end of the year. That was that was the best move Snowcross has done in a while, in my opinion, is mm -hmm. making the pros run the triple crown just with the number of pros there is too. Yeah. And I, I think that brought a, a lot of excitement to the pro class. Um, And I feel like, I feel like there's steps that Snowcross could take to up their numbers in the pro field. Mm -hmm. Because you're looking, look into sport class. I mean, three quarters of those guys are all on teams, mm -hmm. and you could throw any of them into the pro light class, and they'll make a final, if not run good in the final. I mean, you can see Drew won his second pro light race, mm -hmm. and Creighton probably would have won the thing if his sled didn't blow up. Yeah, I mean, I'd say half of the half the sport guys would knock out some of the lower pro light guys and yeah agreed so i think if they did something like a points cap you know how 250s have points caps they don't have that anymore oh they don't no they got rid of it oh really yeah you could stay in, in 250s as long as you want hmm. yeah. I, I guess i didn't know that but yeah. i think if snowcross did a points cap or something for pro light i mean you know do a thousand points in two years or something or i don't know i don't i guess I'd, I'd have to look and see really what people get for points but you know some you get a number like two in two years if you get this many points you have to go up to pro the next year mm -hmm. or something like that just so they can kind of help weed like the fast guys up into the pro class and get people moving up so then you don't got i mean so then you don't uh, then you also don't have a bunch of slower guys running pro light maybe they move back down to sport and mm -hmm. it'll just make the whole show better I mean, if you had two heats of 10 in pro light and they were all guys that could run, they're all top five guys or something like that. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. it could constantly change. It would make great racing. Okay. And you have, you know, maybe then you'd have at least 15 guys in pro class. Maybe you'd have like, you know, an LCQ in pro again. That'd be, that's just the way I kind of look at it. I mean, I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. that's just kind of the view that I have. I what guess. about, what about s spreading the the budget's kind of thin. Wouldn't that really spread the sponsorships dollars out a little bit longer as a, a, let's say somebody in pro light that's, they, they have the speed to move, move up to pro and they're only getting so much from, let's say Polaris or Scudu or cat. And then they moved, move up to pro. Now they're, now that you're a pro, you're going to be asking for more yeah. dollars. I guess that'd be up to up to the manufacturers and stuff. I mean, there's, I guess, it's just, it's hard because snowcross, when you look at it from a perspective, it's just in relation to like motocross and stuff, it's not that big. So it's hard right. to, the budgets just aren't quite there as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
a lot of those, a lot of the guys, I think, are paying their ways too into the, some of the semis. Not everybody, but I know there's a few guys that yeah, there's think, a few guys <laughs> that pay to be in the semis. So I mean, I guess that all work into, I guess, with contingencies with brands and stuff. But I think, I think if the brands would help move their guys up into pro, it would just be better for the sport instead of keeping guys in sport or uh, I mean, in pro light for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I, why wouldn't you as a brand want to see your guys run a pro instead of pro light? Right. I mean, those even the top. That's the big main know, show. The top five guys in in pro light are all in good contention for pro open. I mean, the races aren't that much longer. These guys are all going out and training. I mean, twenty thirty minute motos, and is it what's it twelve or something for pro open? Yeah, last 12, year? twelve. Yeah, to fifteen or 12, something. Like yeah, that? somewhere around there with two laps or yeah. one lap. Cause all all those all the pro light guys sh- that are training on pro teams, they're able to run that pro time. I mean, for sure. It's just. Their, maybe their consistency is not quite there as much. Well, look at mistake, Jordan LaBelle. Yeah. I mean, Jor- Jordan won't have a problem going into next year. I mean, neither will Riley or whoever else moves up into pro. Right. I mean, I don't think all those top pro like guys, it'll it'll take you, you know, a year to learn, but I think mo- all those guys still have contention to podium in mm-hmm. the pro class. Yeah, I do believe so too. Um, going back to the points – uh, capping out on the points, I do believe that they changed the rule last year, and I could be wrong. I do, I do remember talking to somebody, and they were saying that in order for Riley Bester to stay in pro light, because he was supposed to move up last year, mm-hmm. because he was at his points cap, and they ISR changed the rule to where he could stay another year to possibly win the pro light championship. Oh, really? Yeah. And I think this is the year that he has to move up. Yeah. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure he's got to move up this year. Yeah. He is moving up one of the two. Mm Mm-hmm. But I guess, yeah, I guess I don't really, I don't know all the rules for, like, the pro class kind of stuff like that because I'm not there yet. Right. right. (laughs) I don't, that's just kind of my view, I guess, when I look at it from this kind of an outside perspective, I guess, Mm -hmm. is is something like that I feel I could could help the sport, I guess, just to see, like, pro numbers. Yeah. And once you see more pros, I mean, maybe some more people will start following again. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. I think the number of pros have kind of stayed steady for the most part. Yeah. You know, they they haven't really... uh, Dropped. Yeah, they really have... Well, besides the injury part, but, you know, it's been consistent between, what, 12 and 15 pros per weekend. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, for, for the last majority of the 10 years of snowcross, honestly, you know, it hasn't really been a lot of LCQs with a a big number of LCQ riders, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I, have kind of looked back at the, at the numbers when Ross Martin was racing and, and Tim Tremblay and it was, you know, there, there were still 15 guys, Yeah, you know, and they were, there were not that many in the LCQ, but Nevertheless, I think more people should move up. More more people should um, should support the pro class because it is the cream of the crop yeah. of snowcross. Just when you kind of see it from a, like just from the like the sign of perspective. I mean, last year they could have they could have ran pro with one heat after guys started getting hurt. Yeah, I mean, and I think almost every single weekend there was three heats of pro light. I mean, when you're seeing that many pro light guys to pro ratio, mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like there should be a few guys at least that should that are at the top of their pro light to be able to move up. Yeah, and I think I think a few of them are, which will be which will be really good for the sport. Yeah, especially with a couple a couple riders departing from pro class. Yeah, you know, with uh, with um, Logan. Lo yeah, Lo- Logan retiring. Same with uh, Peter Narsa. Yeah, um, and I think he's done completely from snowcross i don't think he's racing in europe anymore after yeah after the the big race there Mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago um that was from what i heard from from levi but with that there's you know there's there's so much potential yeah you know um and then kind of kind of going back i I don't really want to keep going back and forth but going back to the pro pro mod kind of era that would um, are you being a ma- being a, a um a parts manufacturer now? 
that would open you up to doing more too, you know, to developing yeah. more parts to where it's like, okay, maybe, maybe I can make a running board that's a little bit stronger, you mm -hmm. know, or having, I don't know, a arms or something like that. I don't, I don't know <laughs> what, yeah. what you could do, but you know, having that pro open class or semi pro open or something like that, I don't know what you would call it, mm -hmm. but that would help you in a way too. Yeah, I definitely think it would help some of the, you know, some of the brands. Maybe you'd see another brand or two maybe pop up. Yeah. But I feel like, I feel like most of those teams end up doing a lot of that kind of their, themselves. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of personal R and D. But I definitely think you would see some some new parts, maybe a brand or two, pop up into the scene if they had full mods like that again. What brand? What brands? What brands would like make new parts? You're saying. Well, you said a new brand popping up. Are you are you saying snow snowmobile manufacturers or par, like, part like par, manufacturers? Oh, parts manufacturers. Part okay. Manufacturers, yeah. You maybe yeah, like you said, maybe there'd be a like some guys somewhere that can make a running board. Maybe mm -hmm. they start selling those and make their own brand and start doing something like that. You know, this it would open the door to possibilities for things like that to happen, which is never a bad thing. Right. Absolutely. More, more people getting involved in the sport is definitely, um, good yeah. for the sport yeah. to, to grow. Um, and you mentioned that you're in high school, um, is, is, is the dream of eventually going pro there? It's, yeah, it's there. I mean, I'm, I'm graduating high school. Now you start to think about, you know, what you want to do with the rest of your life too. I mean, it's not, you're not, not married yet, are you? No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna put aside everything in my life for racing. I feel like you just kind of. I can't do that. So I'm still gonna be going to college next winter, and I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it another shot, another season of racing. I mean, it's definitely there. I have the drive and I have the motivation too, and I feel like I got the speed. I mean, I've just been ever since like the lowest of my low after my first knee injury. I feel like. I feel like we've been doing nothing but building off of it. And it's, you might, you might, it might go unnoticed, but it's def we've been building. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with another year or two years, I mean, would, next year I'll be racing sport full time. It's, uh, um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's there. I mean, it'd, it'd be sweet to run at least a pro light race at some point, but yeah. I need to get my speed up. And, you know, obviously right now I'm not there. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and say, I think I could, I, just I'm straight up not there quite yet, but I feel like definitely it's still a possibility. Sweet. So yeah. the little little kid dream is still there. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> you can't can't really give up on that quite yet. I mean, mm. it's been my dream since I was five years old. I mean, yeah. I've, I got to give it a shot. I got to give it all I can. I mean, you love when you love the sport, you can't. You can't, it's it's hard to drop something like that. Yeah, I don't know how how anybody does drop something like that. Like Hebert. You haven't heard his name since he retired, yeah. or ever since he got inducted into the Snowmobile Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much the last time that we heard him his name. Um, but aside from that, uh, what is what is your plans for next season? Um, it's kind of kind of a big question mark right now. Honestly, I mean, the plan is to be on the line racing sport class. Um, Obviously, I'm going to be going, I'm going to do online college, so I'm still able to work. I'm still able to ride. But as far as, you know, what I'm riding, if I'm riding for anyone, it's kind of, we don't really know quite yet. It's just, you know, we've been in a pinch the last couple of years. I mean, I've been on a good sled. I've been with a great group of people. I mean, we don't, we don't quite know what we want to do yet. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're exploring different options of what to do, but I mean, the whole goal is to just be on the line again next winter. I mean, we'll be racing with racing sport. I've been training with Kellen Chaperin a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. we go and ride dirt bikes all the time. Been working with him. I he helped me every once in a while this winter, just at the practice track. Yeah, because uh, he was injured. He had a knee yeah, injury, he, right? He did the same thing that I did, just with his different knee. So me and him together, we can make like one functioning body. <laughs> but uh, you know, just I kind of. It's hard. We've, like I said, the dream hasn't died of going, you know, pro light or pro, but you got to start looking at other options. And I've spent so many years, 100% dedicated. All I do is work on the snowmobiles, train, race snowmobiles, which I'm not going to give that up, but 
the whole goal for next year is to go out and have fun. Mm-hmm. I feel like when you start having more fun, the results will come. And that's, that's my biggest plan for next year. I mean, our trailer is going to be up here for sale. I think right now the plan is to ride with someone next year. Um, I was going to say, you buying the all-finished semi? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> but, no, we got we got a couple things in the works, but nothing's finalized yet. Kind of hopefully by the end of the month, the next month or two, we'll know we'll know what's going on. And then, um, I don't know, just as long as I'm racing, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of the big thing. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Okay. And you, you have no idea what brand you're going to be racing on? Not, no, Scudia, at, Polaris. at the moment, no. It's not going to be a cat, though? I don't know yet. It's <laughs> it's it's not out of the option. I mean, whatever, pretty much whatever I'm able to get a good deal with is what we're going to end up taking. I mean, we're kind of, we're not going as into it as we have in years past just because I, we got to pay for college and things like that. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of more or less a budget thing at this point. Got just it. what what we're able to afford with also moving forward in life kind of deal. Yeah. So that's that's just where we're at at the moment. Racing is in everything. Yeah. Pretty much. As much as as much it is as it is, it isn't. I mean, yeah. most like pretty much everybody that's done racing, you you besides maybe Tucker and Elias, all mm-hmm. these guys, you know, you got to go do some form of work after this. So I mean, it's hard to it's hard to just only do racing. You got to you got to make sure you have something set up for when you're done racing because racing won't be forever. And, you know, next year I could go and blow up my knee again and that would be, that would be the end of it. I mean, yeah. one more, one more injury like I've had and that would for sure put a knock on wood. Yeah. That, that would probably be the end of me racing. Just, you know, I want, I gotta have, I gotta be able to walk when I'm older, <laughs> <laughs> just things like that. Yeah. You don't want to be the Terminator out there, but yeah, but it's so, it's so fun. I've spent so much of my life racing that you can't just you can't just walk away from it, especially after last season. I mean, I was bummed, but like, you know, I had three the three podiums, and then like I'm hungry for more. Like I know I've got what it takes, and I can't I can't step away in a season like that. Like I've got to give it one more shot to either prove that I don't have it or I do. Right. And I feel like I do, and you know, we're gonna I'll give it my best shot for at least one more year, if not not maybe three four we'll see we'll see where it goes i guess mm-hmm. take it one year at a time for sure for sure confidence is definitely key in a sport yeah. like this all right um is there anything else you want to touch on before we kind of wrap up here uh oh um, i did want to ask are you going to be um having the same sponsors that you do now as far as like gear companies um are you going to be with i don't know any of the company are are any of those gonna, companies going to follow you through to the to this next season? I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I have. We started working with Bikeman two years ago. I got a great relationship with them. Now I feel like it's you know, and they've really helped. I mean, we've done a lot of testing and stuff with them. I mean, all the brands that I've worked with, I'm I'm pretty happy with with what what we've had through the last few years. So I sure hope so. Um, I guess yeah. I mean, it'd be cool to bring on different sponsors and stuff too, but everyone that I've had in the past, like with last year or two years ago, things like that, I think will continue to be with. I mean, I don't have any issues with anybody right now. And, you know, what we've had has worked decently well. And, you know, I'm happy with them. So why drop something that you like? For sure. For sure. I just didn't know if you were up for contract with those guys or not. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. No, I think I'll just be with who I was with last year again coming into the fall. Nice. Nice. All right, yeah, like I said, is there anything else you want to touch on? Um, no, I don't got a whole lot, I guess. Um, I just got to say, Kellen Chaperin, I am coming for you next year. You better watch out. Um, oh man, see this yeah. is this is what Snowcross needs. This is this is the rivalry that I want to see. I go ride with this clown every single weekend now. Well, not every single weekend, but pretty close and he kind of he kind of got me on a dirt bike last week, and I was kind of oh, hurt my ego. I mean, I'm not great at riding a dirt bike, but <laughs> the the kid rode for the first time in six months. So, you know, we're we're coming for you. Oh boy, we're coming oh, boy. for you. There's gonna be some uh, bumping and banging on the snowcross track. All in good fun. Yeah, it's all good. It's yeah. all good. It's gonna be good to uh, to to shoot that stuff though. 
Oh yeah, it'll know. be. It was. It was. It was kind of a bummer having him be hurt last year. He's one guy I really hang out with a lot at the track, and when your one buddy gets hurt, it's like, well, what are you gonna do now? You can't. Yeah. You can't give him. You can't give him crap for <laughs> how he does because he's just standing there. So you just make fun of him for having bad knees like you do. Oh my goodness, you guys are. You guys are gonna be eighty years old out there. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll with, be in, with crutches or walkers yeah. or something. Yeah, it'll be it'll be tough when we're forty five. <laughs> <laughs> but we 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 sure have fun when we do. That's right. That's right. Stay young while you can. Yeah. No more injuries. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this was episode six of the Vignet podcast. Justin Blazevic on the show. JB Products. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, so yeah, is there anywhere else these guys can find you on Facebook as well too? Um. I got a Facebook. I don't post much on there. That's just Justin Blazevic 723. I think Instagram's Justin Blazevic underscore 723. And then there's JB Products for the parts page that you can find. There's a link to it on my personal Instagram if you can't find it by searching it up. But, yeah, I mean, that's where you can find me if you want to find updates on how bad I am at racing and things like that. So <laughs> find out find out what I break every weekend. You can go there. Yeah, you heard it first. Uh, yeah, this was the Vignette Podcast, episode six. And if you guys like this podcast, hit that like button, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely.